So we're going to do it a little bit like the uh, first session this morning. We'll have a, a Spark Talk, uh, and that Spark Talk will be delivered by Claire Mason. Claire is the founder and CEO of Men Bites Dog, which is a great name for a company, uh, and also uh, the most award-winning uh, B2B marketing and public relations consultancy in Europe. Uh, so we're very uh, happy that she's going to take off this conversation. I'd like to invite Claire Mason to the stage to uh, get us going on this topic. Claire, thank you so much for doing this, and please welcome Claire, as well as the panel, which will join her in a couple of minutes. Thank hey. you so much. How are you? <laughs> Are you ready for the future? If not, why not? What is it that prevents us from taking action today to build a brighter future tomorrow? And in this battle of long and short-term thinking, why is it that short-term thinking so often wins the game? I first became interested in this question. Um, earlier in the year, I was interviewing CEOs for a study for one of Man Bites Dog's clients for a thought leadership project. And the CEOs told me two things that, for me, were like the corporate equivalent of finding out that the icebergs were melting. First, they told me that they forecast that one in five of the world's largest companies that we all represent here today, one in five of those companies will fail in the next five years. And second, the majority of CEOs believe that their own company's past is brighter than its future. Now, I've been interviewing CEOs for more than 20 years, and I have never heard them so pessimistic about their long-term prospects. And they told me that, yes, there's the economic cycle, but this time it's structural. They've reached the end of growth with traditional business models. But luckily, CEOs know exactly what to do to become the future-ready organization that we all dream of. They know that the future demands nothing short of pivotal change, from transforming their business models to digitizing their operations, increasing investment and innovation, and even changing their corporate purpose itself. But CEOs, the people that are in charge, have no faith in their ability to make these pivotal transformations. The question is, why? Well, one CEO described the problem to me as the desert of no return, the period of time during which um, corporates will have to lower their returns to investors or even burn capital to transform from the old world to the new. Now, all organisations need to cross this desert of no, of no return at some point, but leaders delay because this desert is populated with the heads of fired CEOs and the bones of companies that ran out of investment before they made it to the other side. All of our organisations are at different stages on this journey. The leaders have the promise of first mover advantage of winner takes all if they get to the other side first, if they make it. The laggards, well, many, comfortably, many companies are sitting quite comfortably for now but they are on diminishing returns. And the longer time they spend in the old world, the less likely they are to make it in the new. So what do we need to cross this difficult, chaotic desert of no return? Well, organisations need two things. Firstly, we need future-ready leaders who are willing to make this dangerous and uncertain journey, who can bring their people and the markets with them. And we also need future-ready investors who are willing to provide the supplies for the journey in the shape of the capital and the time that organisations need to get to the other side. So if CEOs have no faith that they can make it across the desert of no return, is this the fault of short-term CEOs or is it the fault of short-term investors? In this battle of long and short-term thinking, Whose side are investors and leaders on? Who's the villain and who's the hero? And is it who we think it is? Well, to find out, Man Bites Dog interviewed 1,500 global CEOs and 800 global investors with assets under management of 50 trillion US dollars. And the leaders told us that the greatest barrier to delivering the transformative growth we all dream of is this quarterly cycle. It's the short-term performance that they must deliver for their investors. So are leaders like Elon Musk right to believe 
that actually being a public company doesn't let a future-ready organisation operate at its best. And is the explosion of the explosive growth that we've seen in alternative finance actually an indicator that public listing is no longer fit for purpose when it comes to a company that needs to cross this desert of no return? Or is blaming investors for thinking short term actually just what Paul Polman called the excuse that the markets won't let us think long term? And is the growth in alternative business models um, like Amazon, which measure their success not in short term quarterly earnings, but in long term stock value growth? Is investors' willingness to invest in these companies for the right valuation and the right opportunity an indication that investors are willing to defer gratification and that they will finance the right companies through to the edge of the desert of no return? Well, investors told us that, yes, while CEOs feel under pressure to deliver uh, today, investor sites are set firmly in the, on the future. And they shared three very important insights. Firstly, what they look for when they're investing in companies. Second, how that, which is future readiness. Second, how they assess that future readiness. And most interesting of all, what they really think of CEOs. So investors told us that actually they are future ready. When you look at US-focused investors, they're increasing their investment in future-oriented companies. And they told us that actually this future vision and orientation is actually becoming more important than past performance when they're making investment decisions. So it's almost as if profits are seen as a lagging indicator of past innovation rather than a promise of future return. And when we ask them, well, how do you assess this future readiness? Again, they're not looking in the rear view mirror of your annual report filings. What they're actually looking at is your thought leadership, the substantial content and ideas that your organisation is sharing. So you'd better have some great ideas to share with the markets. And the lightning rod for all of these great ideas and this vision is the CEO. So investors, and in particular US-focused investors, are much more confident in the success of an organisation who have a CEO who's seen as a visionary and a thought leader. And this need to cross the desert of no return is really increasing the importance of leadership in general and of individual CEOs from an investment point of view. And if we look at the critical factors that investors use when they're making investment decisions, globally, and even more so in the US, the CEO is the single most critical factor, closely followed by company strategy and vision. And surprisingly, financial performance is actually the least compelling factor for investors now making investors investment decisions. But don't mistake this new cult of the CEO for a return to old school heroic leadership. Actually, what investors are looking for is something quite different. They want self-disruptive, agile, test and learn leaders who can take people with them through the desert of no return before there's a burning platform to do so. And it's really interesting in the context of Climate Week last week in New York and also the announcement by the Business Roundtable recently that questioned shareholder primacy. It's interesting to note that investors really do acknowledge the importance of purpose and the importance of connecting corporate and social purpose to be a successful organisation over the long term. So while we have traditionally thought of investors as the villains of our story, actually they, they really do get the business case for business transformation. In the US in particular, 76% of US focused investors believe the companies they're investing in will need to deliver significant pivotal transformation over the next three years. So we get to the very interesting twist in our tale, which is that actually Investors think the problem is the short-term CEO. Leaders don't think long-term enough. And when we asked them what they thought of uh, CEOs in the US, I'm afraid to say that actually 70% of investors told us that today's leadership stock of CEOs is not fit for the future. And if we look on this heat map and we move across to Asia, you can see that the picture is even bleaker when it comes to Asia. <laughs> So there are obviously two sides to every story, but the common enemy here 
is short-term thinking. And long-term thinking cannot prevail. If leaders and investors continue to be locked in this dysfunctional battle of blaming each other. So is this battle of long and short-term thinking inevitable? Or can we align the interests of CEOs and investors before these corporate icebergs that all our pension funds are invested in start melting? Well, um, investors offered us some great hope for the future that they would be willing to match future-ready leadership with future-ready investment behaviour. Um, around almost two-thirds of US investors are willing to give companies and leaders more financial scope to make the changes ready to be future ready. And just a slightly, slightly fewer are willing to also give them more time. So let's get future ready. Now is the time to make our organisations future ready organisations. Let's cross this desert of no return and bring about a, more, a brighter future for our organisations. How do we win the battle of long and short-term thinking? Well, I hope that our distinguished panel will hold some of the answers. Thank you.